Welcome everyone to this evening's seminar on community colleges. Um, we will be welcoming two panelists from the US this evening, from Lane Community College and from College of the Canyons. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself um, and a little bit of background on uh, Fulbright and what we do. So my name's Kirsty. I am the communications manager here at the US UK Fulbright Commission, as well as one of the Education USA advisors here. Uh, I spent a total of about four years um, studying and working in the US, uh, first in Oregon and then for my master's in Wyoming. So I'm always an advocate of taking some of those roads less traveled. Um, but in terms of what we're going to be doing this evening, um, I would ask that you hold all questions until the end. There will be an opportunity for uh, you to ask, ask those questions. Um, but the exception to that is if there are issues with the sound, uh, with the screen sharing, then by all means, take uh, the opportunity to use the Q&A box to let us know. Um, just a quick note as well, we will be sending around a copy of the slides as well as a recording of this webinar in the coming days. So look after that, look out for that. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about Fulbright, um, what it is that we do. Um, so the US-UK Fulbright Commission was founded in 1948 in the aftermath of World War II. Um, Senator Fulbright, who is pictured there, he thought that the best way to avoid another world war would be to um, establish a program uh, dedicated to educational and cultural exchange um, to lead to peace and prosperity. Uh, what does that look like today? There's a couple of different ways here at the Fulbright Commission that we work to achieve those aims. One is through our um, uh, the Fulbright Awards, the scholarship program we have for postgraduate study and for research scholars, but also through our Education USA advice services. So Education USA is a global network of over 400 centers uh, around the world. Uh, and we work to provide free, comprehensive, impartial advice on the US admissions process. So if it's your dream to uh, study in the US, then we are here to help. Um, that's enough from me. Um, I want to take a moment to introduce our panelists for this evening. So we have Tim Honadell, who is the director of the International Services and Programs Office at College of the Canyons in California. The college is a two plus two institution specializing in supporting student access to the California State University System and the University of California system. Um, Tim has dedicated his career to the two plus two program um, and can typically be found in a country somewhere sharing this concept. Um, Tim is also in the doctoral program at Aspen University. We also have Jennifer, um, who is passionate about creating opportunities for international education and cultural exchange. Uh, she has worked in higher education, supporting students in their global education goals for 15 years at community colleges and universities. She holds a master's degree in international and multicultural education and enjoys travel, learning and practicing languages and spending time outdoors with her family. Over to you. Slide. So Tim and I are excited to talk to you today about the benefits of attending a community college. Yep, this is going to be good. That's a picture of me on the Mongolian steeps. And that's uh, also a picture of me, Jennifer. So this slide represents uh, sort of a geographical way of looking at the United States. There are some cultural and also physical differences in things like weather and cost of living in these different areas. And uh, uh, this is a, co a common way of looking at, uh, at the US. So when you're thinking of where to go, you might wanna break it up into one of these four blocks. Next slide. The community college system in the United States is unique. It's different from uh, those types of systems that might have a two-year degree program in other countries, and it's a very common method for accomplishing a bachelor's degree in the United States. Uh, there's also other services that the community college does for students, including uh, everything from one semester abroad, where you can go to one of many community colleges in the community that you're interested in, all the way up to doing the transfer programs back to your own country. We also have uh, you know, opportunities for things, gap years, and frequently, 
there's language instruction and those language instruction programs are often a lot less expensive and are also academically rigorous than you might find in non-community college systems. Next slide. So how popular are community colleges, right? If it's just Americans doing this sort of thing, do, or do people use it? Well, actually, almost 100,000 international students are enrolled every year in the community college system, just like you, students like you, and millions of Americans uh, come to community colleges. In fact, about half of all people who earn a bachelor's degree in the United States take some of their classes at a community college. Next slide. And there's some pretty famous people who have also been involved in community colleges. Anybody have an iPhone or watching this uh, presentation on an Apple product? Steve Jobs came from community colleges, Tom Hanks, um, Gwendolyn Brooks, and even Arnold Schwarzenegger. So we have other people too, um, and such as Darth Vader's inventor, George Lucas. Jill Biden, the former uh, wife of former Vice President Joe Biden, said that community colleges are one of our best kept secrets, and we're here to tell you about it. Slide. So the two plus two pathway is a mechanism that is commonly used by US students and is now being more and more commonly used by international students to manage that process of getting that four-year degree. The two-year degree is broken up into two sections in the United States. There's the first two years, your, your freshman and your sophomore year, and there's the second two years, which are your junior and your senior years. And the first two years are basically identical at every institution in the United States. The second two years are significantly different. And so the program, when you break it up into two plus two, means that basically where you take your first two years doesn't need to be at that expensive name brand uh, four-year institution, it can be at a community college where you have small class sizes, a lot of tutoring, and certainly lower costs. In the end, your diploma is exactly the same as the student who spent all four years at that four-year school. And there's nothing wrong with spending all four years at that four-year school. But if you're coming to enrich yourself, studying in two different places, perhaps in two different states, is certainly in two different cities, is a really good way to do that. There's one other characteristic. In a, with a two-year program, a lot of international students are thinking about working and getting job experience in the United States. After the first two years, you can work for one year in your area of, of study. Then you go to your bachelor's degree, you do two more years at that university, and then you can work again. If you do a four-year program, you can only work once and only at the end of the four years. The program and majors available are every major in the country. There's no limits to what you can major in if you started a community college. In fact, you're going to discover what you're really most interested in at a community college. They're designed for that. Uh, let's move to the next slide. So, the main thing to understand is this concept of a transfer degree. A transfer degree is, uh, it's a technical term. What it really matters is that when you first started community college, you talk with your academic advisor and you say, hey, I wanna study this type of stuff and I, I wanna go to this institution to do it. And they make the plan for you. You follow the plan, you get top grades, demonstrate the development of leadership skills, get to know your professors really well so they write good letters of recommendation. You can go to any, University in the United States. Next slide. In California specifically, the systems are integrated very well together. In California, most people have heard of the University of California system, which includes uh, name brand schools like UCLA and Berkeley. There's also a California State University system, which is designed specifically to, for bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. And that California State University system has 23 campuses. And then there's 76 private schools, everything from USC and Stanford to smaller schools like Woodbury, which specialize in architecture. All of those schools all work with the community college system in California. So the two plus two system works very well in California. Next slide. 
So in addition to those US-based transfer programs that we were talking about, we also offer the career and technical programs. You can do those as a career field. For example, maybe you want to get an applied degree in aviation maintenance to fix airplanes, or you are very interested in graphic design or culinary arts. Um, those are all opportunities within the community college. Sometimes those are two-year bachelor's degrees. Sometimes there's one-year certificate programs as well. You could do those as a, um, as a one-year study abroad if you're interested in that. Maybe you have always wondered if you could be a pastry chef. There's probably a community college with a certificate in that program. Um, and Every community college will have different specializations and a lot of times they're very connected to the local businesses and provide work opportunities within the local businesses and help you get practical experience in the career and technical training. So there's a lot to look for in that, either for a one-year study abroad or for degree training. Slide. There's also a program called Global Degree Completion. So if you want to do part of your bachelor's degree in the United States, but you'd like to finish back home in the UK, or you're thinking like, oh, it'd be neat to check out Europe and finish in a European country, or Australia, or New Zealand. That's also a possibility. You might start at a community college in Florida and finish up at a university in England. Um, so those are different opportunities that you have. It's very similar in some cases to the US-based transfer, except that one of the added benefits is usually those career-based programs, those career and technical degrees in the United States, also articulate in this way. So we have students who take advantage of that opportunity as well. Some of the benefits that I really want to talk to you about at community college, whether or not you're attending any one of those three types of programs, is that we have a lot of smaller classes. At community colleges, we have, all of our classes are taught by faculty. You're not going to be taught by a graduate teaching assistant, like often happens at university. And you're not often going to have more than about 20, maybe 30 at maximum students in your class. You will not often see at a community college a large lecture hall. The second thing to really consider is cost. Community colleges don't have sort of the research overhead that the universities have and other cost factors. So we're significantly less expensive for international students. On average, the total cost for a community college, we're talking about tuition and fees, health insurance, ha a place to live, food to eat, you won't see that you would need to have more than $18,000 to $22,000 for a whole academic year. And that would be typical at the community colleges that that is the range we're looking at. Um, but the average public university, it can be anywhere from forty to $60,000. Now, there are some that are lower, higher, but they're almost always significantly higher than what the community college is offering. We also make it much easier to get admitted to the community college. We have multiple admission intakes at most community colleges and lower entry barriers. For example, we don't generally require the ACT or SAT or other high stakes tests that you might have to travel to get. Generally, we just need your high school transcripts. Um, and it's quite easy to apply and change your major generally within community colleges. We're very flexible, so we can help you kind of explore what you want to do and find that right pathway for you. Slides. Uh, those are great points, Jennifer. And uh, College of the Canyons, which is where I've been for a number of years, is uh, an example of a community college that has all those characteristics. Uh, my college is located in Southern California. It's in a small place. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of students, but we really only have 200 international students from 30 different countries. And so it's, a, it's more of one of those medium kinds of suburban areas. It's not a, no tall buildings in the area, so it's not an urban center, and, but it's also not a rural area. We're within one hour of uh, Los Angeles International Airport, so it's easy to get back home at any time that you want to or to have visitors. And as part of the California system, we have every major, all of them, any major you can think of. We can prepare you to transfer to any of those schools for any major. We have a very large staff. Our senior leadership here is dedicated to growing the number of the international students that we have here. We believe strongly that our local students benefit tremendously by having exposure to international students. There are different ways of thinking, their different ideas, how they solve problems, and just to make friends for the rest of the year because it really is, or the rest of their life, because it really is a global world. Um, and like community colleges all over the country, we have very active sports programs. We have very active student clubs. It's a very active place to be, and you'll, know, you'll meet a lot of people. Next slide. 
And this is uh, an example of the cost difference that Jennifer was talking about. If you look at our UC system, um, their focus is on research and development, and their focus is on expensive sports programs. And you'll find that community colleges have one focus, and that's your education for your first two years of a bachelor's degree. And so it's significantly less money to run that kind of a school than to run an expensive school. That's one of the reasons why the costs are less. It's the same textbooks, the same classes, often the same professors as you will see at these other schools. So as you're really getting exactly the same education, you're just getting it at a different institution. If you think about it from the standpoint of a California kid, the California kid gets to live at home, so he doesn't have the expense of, of dorms or an apartment, and you know, mom still does laundry and makes dinner. And so they get all of that for their first two years so that they focus on the second two years and then more and more often in California, they focus on that master's degree because it's getting really important. In California, the local kids are doing basically a two plus three program. Next slide. So Lane Community College, we also are an example of, of, of all the things Tim and I have been talking about, about community college. We are located in Eugene, Oregon. Oregon is the next state north of California out there on the West Coast. Um, our, our town is a little bit different. It's a community college in a college town. So uh, next door to us is University of Oregon. And so our city is smaller. It's about 250,000 people when you add the whole area in. But it feels like a college town. There's a lot of college things going on, sports, athletics, um, all of those types of things that students enjoy. Um, and we have a pretty extensive bus system in our city, and that's something that can be important for international students when you're looking at having good access to, to the city that you're living in. We have some fully furnished student housing. You'll find that there are community colleges that have housing and community colleges that help students with homestay options. There are a lot of good opportunities that way. Um, we offer academic and transfer support services for our international students and a large network of global degree completion opportunities. Next slide. Um, Lane offers scholarships for international students. We have a lot of on-campus work opportunities and we support students in getting that year of work after the, the community college degree and internship. So that can also help for students who are thinking about what do I want to do after my experience in the United States? What do I want to have on my resume? And so we focus quite a bit there at Lane. Next slide. Thank you both so much for that really useful presentation. Um, it would be great now if uh, we can give our participants a moment to um, start uh, writing their questions in the Q&A box. Better to use that than the chat feature if you want to go ahead and put your questions in there um, and then Jennifer and Tim can answer those. Okay, so um, there is a question I think for a lot of international students, um, particularly those who uh, are drawn to uh, community colleges because of the less rigorous admissions requirements um, that, that they offer. Um, is it the case that a student would need to take the ACT or the SAT to get into a community college? I can start that answer. Um, fundamentally, the community college system in the United States is based on a general concept that what you've done before you came to the community college is not necessarily necessarily representative of what you're going to accomplish academically in your pursuit of a bachelor's degree. And so almost always you're going to find that community colleges are not particularly interested in the results of a standardized test of any kind. They are interested in your level of ability to speak English, uh, and that's so that you can be prepared to participate adequately in your college classes. But other than that, you're going to find that uh, standardized tests aren't required. And in addition, uh, other than wanting to know what classes you've accomplished for the purpose of being able to properly place you in areas like math and English, uh, they're frequently community colleges aren't particularly interested in your GPA in high school either. It turns out, in California at least, studies have shown many students, millions of them in fact, actually reached their best academic levels 
after they leave that high school environment. And so we find that students who uh, struggled in high school, struggled to stay engaged, and struggle to really understand why they were there, they show up into the community college system and suddenly they blossom. It's very common, which is why there's 2 million people in California alone in the community college system. Jennifer, do you have anything you wanna to add to that? I would just add that, just as Tim said, I, I can't actually think of any community college I know of that would require the ACT or SAT. Um, so it's quite rare. Some students, some community colleges, if you have them, for example, at Lane, we will take that sometimes in place of a math class or a, a writing class. Um, and we can use that for your placement, but we, we certainly don't require it. Great. Another Thank common you. question that comes up is, well, when I transfer after two years, uh, will I need to show my SAT score? Or will I need to be able to take the SAT or any other standardized test? And the answer to that in California is no. Once you've uh, demonstrated in a rigorous academic environment of a community college what your grades are and how you can manage your time and how uh, academically inclined and what your aptitudes are associated with academics. Once you've demonstrated that with your grades at a community college, the four-year universities, they're not interested in any of that old information or any standardized test information. There are uh, very, very few places where you need to take that test those places that you might have to take a standardized test, it's almost always not for admissions criteria. It's really just so that they can compare that test result with your grades and your persistence at the end of your bachelor's degree, just for statistical reasons to see how they're doing. Great, thank you very much. Um, we have a question here. I'm interested in getting a job permanently after I finish my studies in the US. Is that a possibility? I'm happy to start on that one as well. Um, Jennifer, jump in at any time. The student F1 visa program is specifically designed to make it so that students can gain a US quality bachelor's degree and then return home to contribute to their communities. However, there are many, many examples of where students in different areas of study have found that they can get employment in the United States after they complete their degrees. It is a possibility. It happens all the time. Companies choose workers based on their area of expertise and they sponsor that student. And so when you think about employment in the United States after graduating, think about it the same as when you first started at your school. When you first started at your community college, you have a school which basically sponsors your study visa. At the end of your bachelor's degree, you'll have an employer, which basically sponsors your employment visa. So there's a process, it's not automatic, it's not how the system was necessarily designed, but it happens all the time. Great, thank you very much. Anything to add to that, Jennifer, or should we move on to the next? I wouldn't really have anything to add. I think Tim got it all. Great, fantastic. Um, what kind of support is there available on campus for international students at community colleges? I would say that uh, that that varies by community college and that's something you might want to ask any specific community college you're looking at, you want to ask them that. So for example at Lane, we provide pretty comprehensive service. So we offer students the opportunity to do a video Skype with us once they're admitted to talk about what's your visa interview going to be like? How, how, do you, how are you successful at that? We do airport pickup. We settle you into your apartment. We do a week-long comprehensive orientation. Our peer mentors check in with you weekly in your first term. The advisors like to see you every term. And so that, that's sort of what our approach is. So we have a very one-on-one um, -on -one approach at Lane. Um, and our students tend to like, like that. Um, and, and different community colleges simply do it in different ways. Tim, do you want to talk about what College of the Canyons yeah. does? Yeah, so the, it's a great question, and Jennifer did a really good job of covering that sort of how to get started, uh, everything from the application process and the visa process and housing and all those hurdles that have to be overcome <laughs> at the beginning. In addition, there's two other things I'd like to mention. One is most community colleges also have very in-depth support programs for students while they're in classes. So uh, we have free tutoring, for example, in every subject, those kind of things. A lot of access to your professors, a lot of access to peer groups. 
the important thing for an international student to understand is that of the thousand community colleges in the United States, not all of those institutions are designed to accept the international student. They will accept the international student because they typically will say uh, they'll accept any students. However, you do want to be specific about learning what those services are while you're in classes because out of the 1,000, not all of them have uh, learning opportunities outside of class. They may not have the focus on transfer, those kind of things. So uh, be, you know, be aware of that. With that said, one of the most expensive things about going to the United States is, uh, is where you're going to live. If you know someone and, and, or you've got an auntie or something like that, and it's someone that you want to live with, sometimes that is the decider for what community you live in. Then you need to find out, does that community college in that area have a good international student program? If it does, you've got a good fit. If it doesn't, you need to find a different school. Great, and what does the process of transferring look like in terms of timelines, in terms of, you know, is there, um, are you matched with an advisor or a mentor? How does that side of things work? That, that's a really good question. Um, uh, Lane uh, Community College is a fantastic program in Oregon. And California has a similar program. You're matched with an advisor at your community college. And then you have this process that you go through that's been agreed upon between the two universities. And then when it comes time, your units simply transfer over to the school and you sign up for classes at that school and you begin attending. And you have a, now a new advisor at your four-year institution. So it's a seamless uh, program in almost all states. Some places it's more seamless than others, but in California and in Oregon, it's, it works very well. I think uh, Tim said it very well. It, it, it's really worked out. It's something a lot of our American students do. Um, and what I would also add is some of the important things that you'll want to work with your advisor about is looking at that application to understand what kind of that university application, what kind of things they're looking for that are a little bit American. I mean, for example, in the U.S., we really value students outside of the classroom. I mean, if you want to transfer to a top university, you're going to have to have top grades. That's just true. <laughs> right, Tim? <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, but you're also maybe going to need to do some volunteer work and some you know, clubs and leadership. And so I think working closely with your advisor who will know a lot about that school and will help you say, okay, here's where you get connected up to clubs on campus. And here's where you're going to do some volunteer work. You know, that's a really important part of um, kind of that extracurricular that U.S. universities really find important. Great. Yeah, that, that's really well stated. The way that we stay at it, say it at College of the Canyons is we say you, uh, there's three qual characteristics for a successful transfer. Uh, one of them is getting top grades. Top grades depends on what you want to study and what school you're going to go to. The next thing is what Jennifer really referred to, which is the demonstration of the development of leadership skills. And so there's many ways to do that. Like Jennifer said, student clubs are a perfect example. They're, they're designed like uh, corporations, there's a president, a secretary, a treasurer, you have to follow Robert's rules of order, you keep meeting minutes, you have to do a project, you raise money, you interact with the community. It's a great opportunity to have a great story to tell when it comes time to make you stand out amongst all of your peers at that prestigious university that you're trying to get into. And I, I would just add that can also help with getting scholarships at those universities, because we did talk about yeah, kind of the cost difference between community colleges and universities, and that leadership side can be the difference between scholarships and, and not having the opportunity. Yeah, the scholarship is, a, is important, and Jennifer's right, and it's a great thing that she mentioned. The cost at a community college is so low that a scholarship really is not meaningful, although they might be a small scholarship based on merit or something like that, but the the big increase in cost for a bachelor's degree occurs for those second two years. And that amount of money can actually be a lot. And if you have demonstrated something special about yourself, frequently you can come up with a scholarship scenario of some kind with that next step school. Okay, thank you very much. That was another question we had was around funding, but you've uh, you covered that. Well, um, what about opportunities to play sports on campus? Um, maybe is there any funding related to that or just in general, are there chances to join teams and participate um, in club sports? 
Yeah, the Division Three level, which is the community college level, um, does not have sports scholarships. But keep in mind that the cost of, of instruction is very low at community colleges. The sports scholarship really matters when you move to that next university for those second two years. As far as sports go, it very much depends on the community college. Some community college have very active sports programs. Some of them have very specific to the regional area, like that first slide that we saw where we saw different regions of the US. If you wanna be into ice hockey and figure skating, <laughs> Southern California is not gonna be your place. <laughs> so you, that's one of the reasons why the geography in that first slide matters. Sports scholarships are not a characteristic of community colleges, typically they are, uh, but sports typically are very active sports programs. And one of the big advantages at community colleges is frequently the time that you spend on a bench is really low you frequently get to play a lot and you play against teams which are well matched to your skill sets. Mm -hmm. So if you're an outstanding athlete, you're gonna really shine at a community college and that sports person from the four year university who's scoping out who's good is gonna see you and hear about you. So it's a great opportunity to really stand out. Yeah. And I think that different community colleges have different sports, as we were saying, so you really want to get in touch with the coach on each campus, and usually the coach's contact will be there on the website, um, because the coach can give you an idea of, like, the rosters, what's available, and also sending them their, their, your video to see if they're interested in recruiting. It was a really good way to start. Great. We also have some resources on the Fulbright website about the sports scholarship recruitment process um, for US universities more generally. Um, so we covered a little bit what the process of transferring looks like and how you apply for that. But perhaps you could speak to um, what application components an applicant would be required to submit to you uh, to be considered for admission at the community colleges. Yeah, that's good. That's I'll start because uh, my my college is very easy. Um, and, and the schools are are almost all the same, but there are some idiosyncrasies, but the, navigating the application process is typically very easy. A lot of community colleges like mine simply have a piece of paper you fill out. There's not even an online version because there's many people in the world that don't have good internet access. So you fill out a, you know, some information. Usually it's about yourself and your intentions. Um, at my school in particular, you need to demonstrate whatever your English level is. We have uh, English school, so if it's low, that's easy. If it's high, then you just go straight to college English. And we want to know that you've either completed your high school program or you're over 18 years old. We have many students that don't have evidence of high school completion because of records that are lost in their countries or, or things like that, and, or they actually never did finish. They dropped out for whatever reason but they have great academic aptitude and they're willing to do the heavy lifting. So as far as an application process goes, usually at my school, it starts out with you send an email to the college uh, international program saying, I want to come. And that starts a series of processes, which end up with you even being able to register for your classes before you even get on the airplane and come to California. So there's lots of easy pathways for getting into community college. And usually they've made, removed as many barriers around exclusivity as possible. Yeah. And I would say in Oregon, we simply want to see that you're at least 17 years of age. So we ask for the first page of your passport of just everything that we do is online. Please don't mail us anything. Just submit it through our website. We do. Um, we simply look at the first page of your passport copy of your transcripts and a bank statement to show that you have the funding available for us to issue the visa document. You can apply for housing and scholarships through our website. Um, and for UK students, we waive all um, English requirements. We just simply put you into college writing. Um, and that, that's pretty typical in, in the state of Oregon. Um, Washington's quite similar. Um, so you see across the community colleges, we want to make it easy. We don't want you to have to do a lot of um, extra work, getting extra testing and all that. It's just very simple. And then we send you out your immigration documents and um, you can um, apply for a visa with the U.S. Embassy. Great, thank yeah, you very yeah. much. Oh, go ahead. People in the two plus two world like to say that it's really easy to get into community college and it's hard, it's hard to, to stay. stay. 
because the coursework is just as rigorous as you might find at a, at a Berkeley or a UCLA or at a Portland State University. So Oregon State University. So it's easy to get in and you got to do the heavy lift to stay in. Jennifer, you mentioned uh, housing there um, and, and dorm life. Um, do most students who apply for uh, university housing, uh, college housing, do they get that? Um, and, and what is that likely to, to be like? Are students going to share a room? Are there, is there going to be a suite? How does that yeah. work? Yeah, so I would say every community college is a little bit different in that, in that regard. Um, at Lane, we have um, fully furnished apartments. So students move into a private bedroom with four students sharing one apartment, private bedroom with um, two bathrooms, a kitchen and living room facilities. Um, and then we don't do meal plans. I'm not sure that I'm aware of any community colleges with meal plans. It does tend to be more, if they have housing, it tends to be self-catered for colleges and universities universities or for colleges um, in the U.S. Um, but there is a range of different different opportunities at different community colleges. Um, homestay is also an option um, but I know for for I can speak for Lane in that we we will help any student be housed. We will make sure that either you're in our housing which we've never run out of or help you find something in the community and I think in general that's kind of our spirit at the community colleges that we would help welcome you into our community and make sure you get settled. What, what would you do, do Tim at the College of the Canyons? Yeah, that's a, I like what you just said, Jennifer, about welcoming you to the community. The, uh, that's a big part of, of, of community college life, is that initial welcoming into the community. In California, uh, dorms are very rare. In fact, uh, there's no actual community college out of the 114 campuses that actually have their own dorms. They do, in some locations, share dorms with the California State University that's nearby. The if you think about how the community college system was designed, it was designed for you, uh, the, the student, to be able to stay at home an additional two years before they go off and spend a lot of money on, on apartments and dormitories and food programs and things like that and tuition. And so as part of that cost savings, there was no reason to develop a housing program. And so therefore, almost all community colleges you'll find who don't have uh, what Lane has, which is uh, rare and very good program, is the host family program. And this is where you want to look at the particular community college. If you're entering into a host family program, is, are you staying with a college family near the college? Or is it a corporation that runs housing services across the United States? And there's a difference in uh, what happens to you as a student. And it's, there's also a difference in the level of services and, the, and things like that. The host family programs typically include two meals a day, breakfast and dinner. They typically don't include transportation to the school, but they're so close to the school, usually you ride your bike or you walk or you take a bus of some kind. And then usually you have your own room, maybe a shared bathroom. That's the typical model. The costs for that host family depends on where you're located because the cost of living is different in the country. Uh, where Jennifer went for her master's degree, for example, in Wyoming, the cost of living is much lower than the cost of living is in Southern California. So you can expect to sp spend a few hundred dollars a month more on your host family than you would spend in Wyoming, for example. So that all of those costs, by the way, are included in that number that Jennifer talked about that you need to provide to the community college in order to do that visa process. What those typical costs of housing and food and thing is all included in that. So you can really get a good understanding of what, he, of what it's going to cost to live in that community by talking with the community college about what the housing programs are. Great, thanks very much um, to both of you. Uh, on the topic of visas, we do uh, also have a webinar, um, a recorded webinar on our website around visas, since we know it's an area that a lot of students have questions about. Um, so uh, feel free to check that out on our website to have those commonly uh, asked questions uh, answered by one of the consular officers. Um, yeah, I think I think it's been a pretty comprehensive uh, comprehensive overview um, of the community college system and the benefits of the two plus two pathway. Um, I just wanted to know if there's anything else, Jennifer or Tim, um, that you would like to kind of leave the viewers with um, as a parting thought. Um, perhaps 
uh, to kind of underline the benefits of the community college system or perhaps some top tips um, for um, what a student should be doing next to kind of move down that pathway. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I could just very briefly say that uh, there's multiple pathways to that four-year bachelor's degree in the United States and then access to that work environment, the one year after you complete or if it's a STEM program, three years. And then, uh, like Sam asked about that permanent job. The other thing, though, if you're planning on doing this is to know is that uh, community colleges don't have a rigorous deadline like the other four-year universities do. And so you can plan and probe multiple community colleges throughout the United States at the same time to find out eventually at the end which one you want to get the visa for. You don't have to just pick one. And that happens quite often is a community college uh, candidate will be looking at multiple schools in multiple states and trying to decide at the, at the last minute which one. And since the application process is typically free, there's usually no cost. So the only thing you can do wrong is not try. Other <laughs> than that, the community colleges in, in the United States are ready to have you. I would just add, um, you know, be very open in your college search process and to different experiences. It might be that you want to come to the U.S. for just a little while and do a one-year certificate or an applied degree to experience something you haven't experienced before, or it might be that you want to come for the full bachelor's degree. And, you know, one of the nice things about the community college is it's a far less expensive way to explore those things and take your time in looking into that. And so um, be open to considering different avenues to coming to U.S. education, and we would love to have you. Yep, that's good. I think that's a really nice note to end on. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thanks both to Jennifer and Tim uh, for being with us this evening. Um, thanks to those of you tuning in, and we will be sending around, as I mentioned, a copy of the slides as well as the recorded video from this webinar. Um, and. Uh, Thanks so much again. Um, do feel free to check out our website um, for further information about the admissions process. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.